Today we're going to be discussing stereochemistry. The first topic we're going to discuss is chirality and chirality centers, which used to be called stereocenters. Chirality is the property of handedness. So if we look at our right and left hands, we can see that they're very similar overall, but that they're not perfectly identical. The way in which they're not perfectly identical is that they are mirror images. So if we were to take our left hand and put it up in front of a mirror, the reflection would look like our right hand. And those mirror images, the two hands, are not superposable. So they can't be positioned in space so that all of their corresponding parts are touching or aligned. So objects that can't be superposed on their mirror images are called chiral objects. And chirality is the property of being chiral, in other words, of not being superposable on a mirror image. The chirality of an object can also be often just be determined by inspection, like our hands. However, the ultimate test of chirality is to make two mirror images of an object and attempt to superpose them. And this may be something that we will be forced to do in some circumstances. There are also ways to test objects to determine if they're not chiral. One way in particular is to look for what's called a mirror plane of symmetry, sometimes also called a mirror plane or just a plane of symmetry. A mirror plane of symmetry is a plane that divides an object into two equivalent halves that are mirror images. An example would be, for example, the plane that divides our bodies into two halves if we cut through our heads, through our face, torso, and down between our legs. The two halves of our body are equivalent to each other. There's an arm, there's a leg, and so forth. And they're basically almost sort of mirror images of each other. So that plane would be a mirror plane of symmetry. In biological systems, this is often called a plane of bilateral symmetry. An object that has a mirror plane of symmetry is not chiral. So therefore, it's often easier to prove that an object is not chiral instead of proving that it is chiral. We're now going to look at chiral atoms. Chiral atoms are called chirality centers. The old term that was used was stereocenter, but as we began to sort of look and modify the terminology of stereochemistry, it became clear that stereocenter should be reserved for any atom that causes stereochemistry. Chirality center is one type of stereocenter. So these days, the preferred terminology is chirality center or chiral center. An atom will be chiral, will, have, will be a chirality center, if it is tetrahedral and it has exactly four different groups attached. By different groups, what we mean is the groups at the end of the four bonds have different formulas or different connectivity, different atoms in them, and so forth. An example of this, of this principle, is shown below. Right here, I have constructed a, a molecule drawn as a, in sort of a three-dimensional drawing as a tetrahedron. This would be the central carbon atom. There would be a white group, a green group, a red group, and a blue group attached by bonds. The different colors are supposed to indicate that the groups are different from each other. We can take the mirror image of this molecule by imagining a mirror interposed right here. Now, in a mirror, what happens is groups that are close to the mirror on one side reflect, and in the reflection, they're still close to the mirror. So this red group, because it's close to the mirror here, reflects to a group right there that is also close to the mirror. The groups that are parallel to the mirror right here reflect into a parallel group, and then this green group is far away on the left-hand uh, image, and so it reflects to being far away on the right-hand image. So this would be the mirror image of this group, of this molecule right here. 
Now what we're going to try to do is superpose these. In order to do, to do that, we first have to rotate this 180 degrees in space so that the green group is on the same side in this molecule as it would be on that molecule. So I rotate the green group 180 degrees. Now when I do that, the red group rotates to the other side, but it doesn't rotate to the back. It actually rotates all the way around to the front. And the blue group rotates all the way around to the back. So this is the rotated version of the mirror image. You can prove this by building a model. If we then take this and slide it on top of the original molecule, you can see that we can align the green, the black, and the white atoms. But the blue atom here would align with a red atom there, and the red atom here would align with a blue atom. Therefore, these two um, uh, mirror images are not superposable. Therefore, this is a chiral atom. The two different non-superposable mirror images of a chirality center are called configurations of the atom. And we're going to learn how to name these configurations later on. An atom that has two identical groups will not be chiral. It will not be a chirality center. The most common example of this is a CH2 group, which we call a methylene group. A CH2 group will never be a chirality center. This is going to be very important for us to know because many molecules have CH2 groups. When looking at the structure of a molecule, it's very often desirable to identify the chirality centers. Science, uh, organic chemists will do this by putting a star next to a chirality center. This is going to be a very important skill for you to have because identifying the chirality center is the first step in determining the configuration of the chirality center. Here are some examples of molecules where we can identify chirality centers by putting stars next to them. What I've done in these examples is I've first gone through and crossed out all of the atoms that would not be chirality centers because they have more than one group attached to them that's identical. So for example, in our first molecule, this is a CH3, has three hydrogens attached. It will not be a chirality center, so I put an X through it. Over here, that's a CH2, I put an X through it. This is a CH3, I put an X through it. We're then left with just this atom as a possible chirality center. So now we look at the four groups that are attached to that atom. There's a bromine, there's a hydrogen, there's a CH3, and then there's a CH2CH3. So these are clearly all different from each other. This would be a chirality center, and we put a star next to it. In this molecule, again, I started by crossing out all the CH2s that are part of the ring. Now, looking at this atom, we have a CH3 group. We have a hydrogen, which is not explicitly written, but which it's very useful to write in. And then we have these two parts of the ring. If we look, this bond here is attached directly to a CH2. This bond here is not attached to a CH2. It's attached to a CH that has a methyl group on it. So this bond and that bond are not attached to identical groups. Therefore, we have four, uh, four different groups. This is a chirality center. And this would also be a chirality center for the same reason. If we look at this molecule here, here are CH2s, so we can cross them out. And then we have this double bond. Double bond carbons will not be chirality centers because they're not tetrahedral. This atom is trigonal planar. So we cross it out. We're left with just this atom as a potential chirality center. So again, we look at the groups. We have a bromine, we have a hydrogen, we have a CH2 group, and then we have CH double bond, which is different from CH2. So four different groups, that's a chirality center. You'll notice that most of the chirality centers that we've written are written with dashes and wedges 
because we need dashes and wedges to really clearly show that the atom is tetrahedral. However, be careful. Just because there's dashes and wedges doesn't mean it's a chirality center. Let me show you this example. In this example, again, we cross out all the CH2s. We're left with this atom. We have a chlorine and a hydrogen, so those are different. Then we look at the groups at the end of these two bonds. This is a CH2. Here's a CH2. Hmm. Well, maybe if we keep going, we'll find something different. We go to the next atom. CH2. CH2. Still the same. As we continue to the next atom, we meet in the middle. So there's really nothing left to compare. These are identical groups. Therefore, that is not a chirality center. We can see that this would not be a chirality center by looking for the mirror plane. Although we write these dash and wedge sort of offset from each other, if we were to build the actual molecule, they would be lined up perfectly with regard to our eye, like this. This looks a little messy, but what I've basically done is I've written the wedge, the dash behind it, the chlorine, and the hydrogen all stacked up on each other. You can draw a line cutting through these atoms, through that bond, through that carbon atom, and then through the ring, and you can see that the two halves of the ring are symmetric. This is a plane of mirror symmetry. So therefore, that atom is not a chirality center.